Hello YouTube, Facebook. I'm uh, here in front of my V12. Just finished doing a quick modification yesterday since I've been quarantined and pretty bored. So uh, here, let me give you guys a better look. So yesterday, went ahead and uh, got rid of my viscous fan. Installed, don't know the brand unfortunately, electric fan. This is kind of how it looks all mounted up. Gives you a lot of space to work. And it leaves you with just two belts for the water pump, alternator, and power steering. And uh, I am highly pleased with how it came out. I was able to clean the shroud up a little bit. Overall, some of the pros and cons, I guess, to this would be Hmm. You don't have to deal with the viscous fan. You don't have to deal with the fan clutches going bad. You don't have to deal with the fan going yellow, the risk of it blowing up like some people have reported, the old fan. You are removing rotational mass from the powertrain. So in essence, it should free up a couple horsepower. The most noticeable thing you probably see is that it revs a little bit freely since you don't have that fan kind of just piggybacking on it. The, the draw on the system itself, electrical wise, is very minimal during nighttime driving with you know the headlights on, the fan working. Alternator held up very well, so I'm impressed. If you have an 89, your car comes with a Bosch alternator from the factory, which is uprated in amperage. And overall, the, the cons I could see is just, uh, I don't know, maybe the fan burns out prematurely for whatever reason, then you have yourself another project having to replace it and removing all that crud. Because getting to the fan is about an hour by itself, getting the shroud off. And in the process of removing the, the old fan, I also went ahead and deleted all the, the mounting points, the hub that went on there, as you can see. These, these screws, I don't know if you can see them, right underneath that little plug that I put there for the time and cover is one and two screws. Those screws, the original ones are much longer because you have a hub here in place. So I, I just found a common threaded screw and I cut them down and put them back in their place and everything kind of worked out well. Now the other two are studs, okay, some people talk about putting spacers but you know with this quarantine I minimized my exposure so what I did I just took two nuts that fit around there and I just torqued them down with the existing bolts that uh, came off and the water pump is not leaked I gotta say I'm overall pleased with the des with the design with the outcome I removed the condenser also so I, I got weight savings from the front for sure of at least 110 pounds with the fan, the hub, the mounting point, condenser, which is not bad. That all helps performance and economy. So how did I run the controller to it? So on Amazon, I'll link it in, link it in the description. This is a kit. You take off this plug here is uh, for the air injection and it's basically for emissions and I've removed all that to go all together. So I place it there that's uh, running to a hot point at the firewall here. That's constantly giving 12 volts. Ran that wire to the firewall there. And I go around. My buddy did the electric work. He put a trip fuse here. So if anything went wrong with the install, I would just trip this fuse instead of frying my electrics. And then he ran that line here. Let me see if I can get a better look. All the way through, all the way around. Boom. Another thing too is I gotta find a controller for it to shut it off while it's moving because you don't need this fan on while it's moving because you have constant airflow going through the radiator. This is mainly for when you're idling in traffic. So I don't need to have that fan on all of the time. That's gonna be the next part of the project to find a 
suitable method to turn it off while inside the cabin. And uh, aside from that, it was pretty straightforward. I'm highly pleased with it. I've only driven it back home from the buddy, from my buddy's house where I did the, the repair from. No overheating issues to report. Very nice. And it's loud, I will admit. It is a very, very powerful fan. So it's drawing a certain amount of CFMs and I'm pleased with it. And uh, what else can I say? So the shroud, I had to modify the shroud a bit. Can't really see because it's behind so much stuff, but took some sheet metal with a friend of mine we cut out a hole in the middle so the sheet metal was only following the very edge around that's where i mounted the fan at you see the screws there in the top left and uh, i mounted the that sheet metal to the shroud with a self-tapping screw and also some some nuts and bolts there so you get creative there you can do what you want you can modify the, the shroud how you want, but just make sure you make it tight so that airflow goes through and if you seal all the gaps around it so everything is consistent. But hey, that's that, that was the project. Uh, not the best write-up, not the most detailed project that I've done video-wise, but you guys get the idea. It's uh, fairly easy removing this bracket. Once you get this, this course will pour it off. I mean, that's it. You're pretty much, you're there. So... Thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, keep these classics alive. Don't swap LSers in them. These power plants are more than capable of delivering power, putting a smile on your face, and it's just some some special by having a V12 under there. This is Pedro's Garage. Thank you again.